Hockey Show, and today we are talking about game number three, which is coming up in just about a couple of handful of hours ahead of us now as game three is underway as the Panthers own the series two to nothing right now. And boy, oh boy, this series has been one to watch, and the internet is going on fire about no one can be right or wrong or anything about that. The Barkov hit, no one can be right or wrong there. No one, no one can ever concede or to any. We can never all just unanimously agree on anything. But the one thing that I think we should agree on is that this is a do-or-die game for the Edmonton Oilers tonight. No matter what you think about going into this game, this is a game that the, the Oilers have to win. If they lose this one, right, even if they lose this one and it's 3 to nothing, I'm not going to say sit here. Well, I'm going to stand because I'm not sitting. If I was sitting, it would be a pretty boring show. See, look, I, this is me sitting. You can't see me. You would just be blank. Boom, I'm back. Anyways, um, what type of fucking idiot is making this show? Um, anyways, um, the Edmonton Oilers, even if they go down three to nothing, they have been a fine team. They're in the Stanley Cup Finals. This is a good team. They has the best player in the world in Connor McDavid. They have Leon Dreisaitl, the best freaking European in the world right now. They have Evan Bouchard, Nugent Hopkins, Zach Hyman, all these players who are on a roll. Ekholm is a stud. Like, they have a lot of good pieces for them. Game 1 easily could have been theirs. And Game 2 would not have been theirs. But they've been good in both of these games. There's just a, there's just two issues that is wrong with this team. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. But, well, actually, let's talk about it right now, right? If Okay, hang on. Let's back up. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Games 1 and 2 easily could have gone the Oilers' way. Especially Game 1. But the issue with the Oilers is that sometimes when the, they have a very specific way of scoring goals, and it, they're like the cheat code kind of way of scoring goals, where sometimes you play NHL, and the, the guy you're playing online against like just knows like the trick to just be able to like just, you know, come up to the, like go around the net to the slot score, you know, like do a toe drag that beats the goaltender short side, because NHL, you can always score short side. Like the, the Oilers have are a very good team at scoring these, these cheat code, like, what are you going to do kind of goals. And that's what they were trying to do a lot of in games one and two. But there's an issue, is I think the Oilers, and this has been my case, is that I really think the Oilers have been in a very lucky stretch of making it to the finals here. First round, LA Kings, they own their ass. The Kings have no right to be a cup contender. They are an incomplete team, very bad, just bad team Oilers, we know that they beat them. Easy win for the Oilers, right? Second round, the Vancouver Canucks almost came back in four separate games and won against the Oilers. That close, that close, they almost were knocked out by a pretty not that great uh, playoff team. Then the third round, they play up against a team in the Stars who had to go through hell to beat Vegas, beat and play such a tight game against the Avalanche, and now they're up against another super tough offensive team. The team had been so so much recently that they just couldn't hang on anymore, and they collapsed, right? It was perfect timing for the Oilers to ups I don't want to say upset, but to take down the Stars. Now they finally are up against a team in the Panthers who play that complete game, that complete effort on all 200 feet of the ice. And the, the Oilers are having a very strong battle against that, where they are a super phenomenal team, amazing offensively, but the second half of the ice, there's two ends to a hockey game, and right now, on one end of the ice, the the Oilers can't do, don't, don't worry about any of this, uh, the Oilers can't do anything on this side of the ice. Up here, they can run the gambit, they can do everything they want, but the second the puck goes the other side of the ice, it's like, it, it, it really is a gamble of what's going to happen. And the Panthers seem to only be getting better in this series, like they do in hockey games. So for me, there's two things the Oilers need to address going into game number three here tonight. For one, they have to clean up the D zone, right? Because the offense, I think, for this team will come eventually, right? There's so, like, here's the thing. What do you do when your sword is the best sword in the world? There's nothing else you can do except rely on your sword and help everything else. 
this team is so perfected when it comes to the offensive game maybe not completely but when it comes to needing to score goals they have the offense to get there right it you can't change anything you're not going to change anything about the oilers right there's nothing that they can adapt to they've been owning that side of the ice maybe game two is a debate but they had their chances in game two to score and they haven't done that. So there's not a lot you can adjust there. What you can adjust is your shield, right? You might be the best fencer in the world and swordsman, but if you need that shield, that's a whole other game. And the Oilers, they really need to perfect that. Because right now, they've done a bad job in their own zone a lot of times. A lot of the goals that are uh, that have been scored, right? That first uh, game, right? Game one, first goal to score by Verhage, right? It's the, it's the, let me flip this around. It's the Panthers coming into the zone. Two guys here want Verhage across the ice, right? I think it's Bennett, maybe, I don't remember. Goes into the ice, the defenseman sucked into him, back pass to Barkov, and then it's a two-on-one here, and Verhage's crashing the net and it's just it's just a bad collapse of defense there and they've done that like three times now that's how they've scored goals that Nico Mikola goal after he shot in his own net it's them going into the zone back pass back in the back of the net and Stuart Skinner is just not the goaltender who's going to make all those kind of saves if you give that like prime chance it's going to go in the back of the net and Skinner is a okay goalie I don't think he sucks I don't think he's the worst in the world but Skinner is not a guy you can rely on like Bobrovsky or a lot of goaltenders that they played up against he is very very like mid does not mean sucks mid means mid medium mid, like average and Stuart Skinner is the most mid goaltender in the playoffs this year I think like he is just nothing that special he's fine he can get his team to where they need to go but if they co if they fail for him in front of them that's going to be a world of hurt especially when they do horrid mistakes like that last in game number one that Darnell Nurse goal where the puck is in the corner passes out here Darnell Nurse's stick is just if you listen to red green listen to good old green on the if anyone knows that show like just listen to him keep your stick on the fucking ice and if they do the puck will not have gotten through that area to the slot the most prime opportunity and you saw it so many times last game too i gotta say there was like twice where the oilers literally just lost the puck in this area once they literally passed it to no one and there was a panther right here except he wasn't expecting such an idiotic move so he didn't expect oh I could have scored a goal right there but two times now Darnell Nurse's goal completely misses the pass boom in goal Bouchard passes it to Rodriguez right here and he shoots in the back of the net they need to make sure that D zone is perfectly clean because if they leave any meat on the bone for the Panthers they're going to eat that up and eat it whole and eat it and love it and they can and it's it's the type of thing where if the... Because they know what they're getting themselves into, right? Things are not just going to suddenly change for the Oilers. But Brodsky is here to play, and the Panthers are one of those clutch teams. They're not just going to evaporate in midair, right? It's not going to happen. It's not going to be like McDavid and Dreisaitl on the play, in the finals. They're not just going to evaporate, which I, I wouldn't say they've evaporated. I think Dreisaitl maybe, but McDavid definitely has been there. He just can't get the points on the board. because And people who claim that are idiots and fucking stupid because you don't know how hockey actually works anyways um but the other thing right is to obviously they need to learn how to score the series is like what is it's like four uh four th seven to one or something like that like if this isn't if this is like one of those soccer finals where they play two games and they just merge the scores together they're losing seven to one that's a bad score and luckily that's not how this works it's not like soccer where they got to overcome that six goal deficit they have two games well they technically have like uh five games left because it could go to seven um to come back from this but i think the biggest thing is the way they've been trying to score mcdavid hyman have been doing a lot of the heavy lifting here when it comes to trying to score where they'll try to come from the outside make like a toe drag a nice move in to get into the slot and here's the thing if you've ever played nhl and i know i'm going back to this again but if you've ever played nhl or hockey in general and your team needs to score what happened or if you just watch hockey what's more likely to get you a, a goal right you're like a top player just trying to make the the all-out play where he's like in the zone he tries to do a toe drag nice windmill to try to get to the slot and get the goalie right have you ever, does that ever work in nhl never especially when you need to be clutch and the other guy is also trying to play clutch and be that defense to shut you down right what's more likely to score the way they scored with Ekholm in last game where they, just, they naturally develop a two-on-one and it's a clean shot into the back of the net 
Or McDavid, of course, he's got like the best chances of anyone in the world to do this, but to zip, zigzag through everyone and beat the goaltender, right? It hasn't worked yet, and that's not how you score goals. They need to allow plays to naturally develop and actually set up plays, which is fucking hard when your team is not set up to play a very roundabout game, unlike the Panthers are, where the Panthers can roll four lines out there, especially three lines out there, and have guys consistently trying to score goals different kinds of ways. Um, the pan the Oilers, they just don't have that. They only have the one line. And I, I hate when people say this, but it's true, especially right now, is that the bottom six for the Oilers are nothing. They're not going to get anything going. They have to only rely on their, like, top five guys. And right now, they're just trying to give the puck to McDavid and or Hyman and shove the puck in the back of the net. And that's not going to work. It could work if you need that one goal, but they've needed two goals or three goals and that's not how you're going to score you need to have those developing plays where you pass the puck to the dot down low like they need to set up those plays zip around the net instead of doing their zip around where they wrap around and, like try to shove it to the slot where then it like bounces out somewhere because those plays are so scrambly like you like every goal is not a scramble goal like look at how the panthers have scored they haven't scored one goal like that they got to wrap around the net get it to the point get across over here let everyone set up get it down low get it back up here shot maybe a tip in the front maybe shot it's a jam up front where everyone's set up ready for it instead of everyone wrapping around and everyone's discombobulated like it is a much better opportunity for a team that's so highly skilled to get Bouchard and Hyman and Nugent Hopkins in the play instead of just like two guys trying to shove the puck in the back of the net and and it's not like we haven't seen them do that that's how the Oilers play they're unreal but right now, everything seems to be collapsing. Even their their streak that ESPN for for God's sake, if it's if they're preaching it like the Bible, they don't want you to forget that their that their penalty kill streak was unbelievable. So to me, I don't know. Going into Game Three, I'm very interested to see what changes because even if this goes up three nothing, right? They're like. The Oilers are a phenomenal team, and I wouldn't doubt if they could get two wins still out of this series. But the way they've been playing and the way things are going right now, the Panthers seem to do better away. They seem to do better away, and they only get better throughout a series. The Oilers, I know it's only been two games, but it's a very small sample size that you can change things in. And right now, it's two to nothing Cats, and the Cats are a shutdown team that can that are clutch. They come to the occasion. They they change what they need to change, and they have guys like Bobrovsky and Kachuk and Barkov, who seemingly is going to play, that are all ready to finally hoist that Stanley Cup and do whatever it takes to win. They have a silent game. They haven't looked discombobulated once. They look like they're always in control. They always look like they're their head they, they they've never looked panicky even in game one where the oilers were all over them the offensive zone they never looked like they needed to panic and that's what happens when you don't truly give up those amazing shots from the top right you can do whatever you want to your goaltender make the other team's goalie fall on the ice and he's like oh god but it doesn't matter if you can't get that shot on net it doesn't matter if you're like th there's a big difference of of having those big like passes across where everyone's like oh shoot oh shoot oh no what's going on and like okay we're covering we're covering oh it's a shot off the post you know it's a very different vibe when you're playing hockey like that and it's a big difference when your whole team is being outplayed by the other team than you i don't know how exactly to say it but anyways the panthers i think this is still going to be their game tonight I don't have a lot of faith in the Oilers to change what they've done because looking at their resume, they don't. And looking at the Cats, they do. That's all I got to say. So for me, that's all I got to say. So please subscribe if you made it this far. Please, I am fucking begging you. Please subscribe, please. And until next time, too sweet. Have an amazing day and ta-ta for now.